Alors, Tradesh, un détail sur les vidéos, is mastering top-down trading method, like top technical tradesh, a part a tree. Have you watched part one and part two? Very good. All right, in part one, we were talking about uh, short-term, medium, and long-term trend. We're talking about the short-term trends are forming, okay, the medium-term trend, and the medium-term trend are forming the long-term -term trend. So I recommend to traders to watch, uh, okay, part one so they may understand how we use, uh, okay, uh, the short-term, medium, and long-term -term trend uh, when we, uh, for trading, okay, uh, the top-down uh, trading method. In the second video, so, right, so we also show traders how one can identify a high probability trading setup on a higher time frame and then implement a valid top-down trading method. All right. In the third part of this uh, series of videos, all right, uh, I want to talk about okay, uh, viewing or looking at the chart from a different angle, from different time frame. Uh, what we are trying to do here is to explain to traders all right, why we need to apply a top-down trading method. So this will, this will help traders to understand more and uh, to master okay, uh, the top-down trading method. All right? So if you are a new trader, a top-down trading method is also called a different time frame trading method. It's also called a multiple time frame trading method. So when you hear somebody talking about a top-down trading method or a multiple time frame trading method or a different time frame trading method, they are talking about the same thing. All right? So talking about different viewpoints, all right, so here we are. I'm on a yearly chart of Microsoft stock. If you're on the yearly chart, this is what you will see. All right, so this is a bigger picture, all right? So anybody that is uh, trading Microsoft, that is looking at the yearly chart, will see that there is a resistance here at 53 98 because he or she can see clearly that there is a resistance there. All right, 5398. All right, anybody that is on the yearly chart that is applying for instance Fibonacci extension for the price action in this session here will see that this, the Microsoft stock has broken above the 138.2 percent Fibonacci okay extension level of this uh, prior high here. He or she will know that, okay, there is a resistance also at a 53.40, which is the 138.2% Fibonacci extension level of the prior trend, all right? But this, we are talking about the same financial instrument. If we drop it down, okay, now to the daily chart, for instance, will you be able to have all those information that we have gathered on the yearly chart? No, you will know. You see here, on the daily chart, you can see that the price form, okay, a kind of bullish chart pattern as he was breaking a bull, that is 73.40. Now, that 73.40 level is that, uh, okay, 138.2% Fibonacci extension level on the yearly chart. So, if, for instance, all right, you go to the yearly chart and you, you gather some essential information before coming to the daily chart, you will know that where we were here on the daily chart, okay, it's a critical zone and we need to monitor carefully what is likely to take place here. In fact, the prior had formed a triangle to acknowledge a triangle is a consolidation, all right, to a certain degree has formed a triangle to acknowledge that uh, 138.2% Fibonacci extension level on the yearly chart before running away. All right, you see, there's another key level here that we have drawn on the yearly chart, and it gap up now to this point in time. So, what is happening? Why do you care about a top-down trading method? The reason is a lot of uh, technical traders, for instance, may decide to trade on a daily chart, may decide to trade on a weekly chart, you may hear technical traders say, oh, myself, I look, I look for my trading setup on the yearly chart. Nothing wrong with that. Another one may say, I look for my trading setup on the weekly chart. Another one may say on a monthly chart. And the question I'm asking, why don't you look for your trading setup or validate your trading setup on the bigger picture? Why, if you have the yearly chart, why don't you look on the yearly chart also if you're on the daily chart? 
So a lot of uh, technical traders will refuse to look on the weekly chart or the monthly chart because they think that they should only look on the weekly chart. So what they are doing is a fundamental technical trading mistake. So if you go to www.dayprotrader.com, click on the sixth biggest trading mistake. Trading on one time frame alone or making a trading decision on one time frame alone is wrong. Right? You can quote me on that anytime and say, George Beaulieu said that, all right? You can quote me on that, all right? Don't use one time frame alone. But it has been going on for some time, and sometimes traders are making those mistakes, and they don't even know. I mean, they don't even feel it, all right? <laughs> and they keep doing it. They go around, 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 they come back. So until you, ad you identify, so it's before you will start improving your trading, you need to sit down clearly and challenge yourself and find out what are your favorite trading mistakes that you, you keep for yourself for years? It can be rushing into a trade. It can be having many trades open at the same time. It can be being impatient. It can be something else. So, but here we are. We are talking about a fundamental okay, trading strategy using different types. So the point I'm making here, talking about okay, viewing the charts from different angles, from different time frame. So somebody who just bothered a little bit, who was a little bit curious, went to the yearly chart, will know that this pink line here is a very, very important key level, and they, they, he or she will be very careful here and make excellent decisions. But if you just come to the daily chart like this, you see, as the price came on the daily chart, you see, first time it come to that point in time, this is a good opportunity for day traders. The first time the price coming to a resistance level, the professional will acknowledge it. So you can, here it is, on that day here, as a day trader, you may be watching it. Price coming here, a key level. So you go to your lower time frame, and then you can know that they will start a little bit. You can grab quickly 50 pips just doing this. Professional know that it's a very important key level. It comes there for the first time. I'm talking about the first time. They will acknowledge it. All right. See here? So this is what we are talking about. Looking at the chart from different angles. It's about using a different time frame. It's about using multiple time frames. So it's not all about using exactly a three time frame. It's using at least two time frame. At least two time frame. So for traders that are using the TSTW24, what we say is that look for a trading setup on any time frame, on the two hour time frame. All right, on the 30 minute time frame, on the daily chart, on the weekly chart, find high probability setup and then go to the first best time frame. So we are using at least two time frames. The trading setup is somewhere else right? on another time frame. You drop it down to the first best time frame. The trading setup will generate the signal on the first best time frame. Is he a good? Trading setup? Is he a bad trading setup? Is he a useless trading setup? Is he a high probability trading setup? So, this is what we are talking about. So, the top down trading method is about using at least two time frames. At least two time frames. But generally speaking, we use three time frames the, the setup time frame, the signal time frame, and the entry time frame. So, you see now, so the same financial instrument, Microsoft, this is what we see on the daily chart. We say it's trending like this on the daily chart. But the same financial instrument going to the yearly chart, this is what we see. You see? But here on the yearly chart, we got a better information. This resistance is broken. This is a high. The next challenge for this move up is this one here. 73.40. All right. If he breaks the pull of this level, all right, and finds support, we can now look for an opportunity to buy. Again, on the yearly chart, we you see I draw some channel here. We projected those channels you see here, and we are now approaching the top of one channel here. Those information we gather them on the yearly chart. Before we can go to another, so I can combine, I can gather my information on the yearly chart and then go to the daily chart. I can gather my information on the monthly chart and then go to the hourly time frame. I can gather so at least you two time frame. 
This is about using different time frames. So what we are trying to do, talking about viewing the chart from different angles, so you are looking for a good reason to buy or to sell on your entry time frame. That's it. All right. So by going to another time frame, you are looking for a good reason. So here we are, as you can show you now on the daily charts, the price came to the peak line for the first time. We will expect it to pull back a bit because it's a resistance level. So on the yearly chart, we gather that information that this 138.2% Fibonacci extension level of this prior high, if the price breaks above the prior high, the next challenge is 138.2% level. So we know that information, we have it here on the yearly chart. Now this is a good reason why we can go to the daily chart or another time frame expecting a reaction around that key level there will be a reaction and as i've shown you before there was a reaction the first time the price came near that pink line now if the price breaks above that pink line we will expect to retest it again you see he went above it he went above it first time he retested it come back above he retested it those are expectation a reaction so there is a reason why we will expect that pullback and that reason is the 73 40 level the one three eight point two percent level so we are not just looking at the chart on a higher time frame all right we are when we go to one time frame to another time frame when we go to a higher time frame we are looking for good reason or valid trading setup that will allow us to go to another time frame to expect a bullish or a bearish trading setup. This is it. There are more to this, and I, I, I encourage traders to watch the full length for this video. When we are using a different time frame, we this will also help us, okay, to time the market correctly one of the challenges that uh, the fundamental traders are facing is that a lot of fundamental traders can analyze the market and know what is a good value or bad value uh, financial instruments that are oversold they can do all this but the trouble the problem that they are facing is that they don't know how to time the financial market by using different time frames a technical trader can time the market more accurately all right can time so that's why we use three time frames one time frame for the trading setup, another time frame for the signal now we, we can accurately enter the train and then let it run from there beautiful all right so this is the advantage of using okay a different time frame by viewing the chart on the yearly chart by viewing the chart on another higher time frame we gather essential information and we will use those information on another time frame we can use either two time frame we have to use minimum two time frame at least two time frame all right now if we go a little bit deeper talking about uh, okay viewing the chart from different angle traders that are using the area way we talk about a higher degree wave count and a lower degree wave count again we look at the the, the area wave structure on one time frame we gather some information about the price structure on a higher time frame on a monthly chart and then we drop down to the daily chart with that information we can also time the market accurately so in this third part we can by viewing the chart from different angles we can perfect our market timing we can make excellent decisions whether we are using okay just in finding okay a good reason why we should buy on a higher time frame before going to the lower time frame to buy and sell we can also use the earlier wave a price a structures okay so if you do not know about the area wave or you want to know more about how to use the multiple time frame as an area wave trader go to 24 digit 2 digit 4 24 Elliot waves youtube channel check out our playlist about okay um Elliot wave validation Elliot wave validation by uh, 24 Elliot waves youtube channel right digit 2 digit 4 
Elliot Waves in plural, in one word, okay, YouTube channel, look for the playlist, uh, wave validation, or go to www.24ilioway.com, click on, okay, Elliot Wave Validation, all right, so when we want to validate our wave count, all right, so this, you understand, so the reason why we want to look for use at least two time frame we want to find valid the signal all right so if for instance that's why we say that it's a fundamental trading mistake if you go for instance on the 50 minute time frame or the 30 minute time frame you start see double bottom here you just buy here why are you buying on the, just because you see double bottom on the 30 minute time, why are you buying so this is the question so anytime you are buying ask yourself why am i buying <laughs> okay so do you have a good reason why you want to buy? This is it. Well, you want to sell. Oh, right, to is overbought. RSI is overbought. And you want to sell. Do you have a good reason why you should sell? Or you go to the four hour time frame, all right, and the stochastic is overbought and you want to sell. But look carefully here. The stochastic was overbought here. And the price was going up. Okay, do you have a good reason? So here you can see here that at the point when the stochastic was overbought on the four-hour time frame, you can see that the price breaks above the peak line. We know that on the yearly chart this is a very important key level, and the price pulled back and retested here. After he retested that level, the stochastic was still overbought on the four-hour time frame. He displayed a higher low on the four-hour time frame. Oh, well, my friend, this is a buy. In, this is an invitation to buy. You see. It's an invitation to buy. You retest it and form a higher low. It's going to go up and it gap up even here. Look. But the stochastic on the four hour time frame was overbought. But because we have gathered some information on the yearly chart, we know better that though the stochastic on the four hour time frame was overbought, one should not sell. You see? One should not sell after this higher low. Because why? It brings above a very important resistance level. So this is what we are talking about. Use a different time frame trading method. Use multiple time frame trading method, meaning that use at least two time frames. Gather information on a higher time frame. See the bigger picture. So what we are doing, all right, what we are doing in fact, talking about a master in the top dot middle. So we go to the yearly chart, we look at it, we say, well, that's what we see. All right. And then we drop it down to the quarterly chart. We want to see how it looks there. So some information that we cannot see on the... So by going to the yearly chart, we are zooming, okay, into it. All right? All right. No, no, we are not zooming into it. We are zooming out. Right? We are zooming out of it, okay? When we are going to the lower time frame, we are zooming into it. We want to see... The, 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 the little details, when we are dropping down to the lower time frame, we want to see the little detail. That's what we are doing, zooming into it. So the same thing we are looking at, we want to go deeper and deeper and look at it carefully before we buy or sell. It may look bearish on a daily chart, but it may be bullish. <laughs> All right? So people see double top, the an inverter, whatever they see on the daily chart, but if you look deeper or you gather more information, though it looks bearish on the daily chart, one should not sell. That's it. All right. So now that we see that it is on the yearly chart, we say, all right, let's go to the quarterly chart. What can we see? So on the quarterly chart, we can see that, uh, okay, it was a clear double bottom here that was formed, beautiful, gorgeous, or here it is. And the price, you can see here, here you can see, it become clearly for us on the daily chart, on the quarterly chart, that the price, okay, after this quarterly candlestick bar is broken, we know that, okay, it, it found a resistance, people sold it at that resistance of 53.98, but now here it is, after this one, we know that, okay, they are pushing it back up. You draw the high and the high, the low and the medium line of this candlestick bar, you play carefully, and they're pushing it. See the first candlestick bar on the quarterly chart, you retest it here, that pink uh, uh, line, it is sold it down for a while, and the following month, they took it up again, you see? So we are looking at the chart, the same financial instrument, from a different angle. We are using a different viewpoint, all right? It's like a, you come very close to something, and then you step back, and then you step back, and then you step back, and then you stand on top of a mountain, and then you are viewing a city. 
or you live in London, all right, you are on top of, uh, you are uh, on the ninth floor or the tenth floor, and you are looking at the city, all right, it's a different, different viewpoint. But if you are, for instance, on the fourth floor, you have a different viewpoint. But somebody who is on the twentieth floor will have a better viewpoint. So the viewpoint that everybody is having for the same city is not the same. But by by combining the different viewpoint, we can make excellent decisions about the city, yes or no. So the same thing we are doing. So from the yearly chart, we look at it. Okay, then we go to the quarterly chart, we look at it. All right, we gather information. Anytime we come on anytime frame, draw your trend line, draw your resistance, gather more information. Is there any new information that you can gather from the quarterly chart that you did not see on the yearly chart? All right, you see now? And then you go, all right, okay, let's go to the monthly chart. You go, to, you go to the monthly chart, don't just stare on it. You want to gather new information. All right, you gather new information. You say, all right, it's a pullback. Here, yeah, what's going on? It's in the rising channel here, all right, on the quarterly chart, it's in the rising channel, and so on and so on. You draw a trend line, you connect the high, the low, you draw a different trend line on the monthly chart, you say, all right, George, okay, now I see, now I see this trend line combining this low and this high here. Okay, there's a high chance that if you start pulling back, we need to watch that, uh, okay, that trend line, all right. So you draw it according this low and this high here. So all right, okay. Why well, keep my eyes on it? So probably you did not see, you did not have that information, all right. You did not have that information on the uh, on the yearly chart or on the quarterly chart. But now on the monthly chart, you know that all oh, right, there is another trend line that I need to be aware of. So we are gathering information as we are looking at the same financial instrument from a different time frame, from different angles. All right, each time that we turn it around, all right, we are trying to gather more information. As we finish to gather those information. We combine all those information, trying to build, all right, to make a decision. So the reason why we you uh, a lot of traders tend to make a mistake is that you think that it's going to go up, all right, and then you buy, all right, you buy, but the price went down. So if the price went down, maybe you missed some information. <laughs> maybe you didn't look at it properly. Maybe from the view your viewpoint, all right, it looks to you that you should sell. But if you go to different time frame and look at it from different angle, you may see that, all oh, right, though on the daily chart and the weekly chart it looks bearish, in fact, on the monthly chart and the yearly chart, one should not sell. Now you see it now. So this is why we use a different time frame trading method or a top-down trading method, looking at the chart from a different angle, different time frame, to gather more okay, vital information that will allow us to make a decision. Right? Or you sell a financial issue because you think it's going to go down. That's why you sell, yes or no. Right? You sell it because you look at it, you're a technical trader, so you should sell. Okay? All right? So, you sell. But the price goes up. All right. Have you looked at it from all angles, all the time frame that you had, okay? If your broker allow you to see the yearly chart, why don't you look at it? If your broker allow you to see the quarterly chart, why don't you be a little bit more curious? All right, okay? Have you missed something? Okay. All right, that's why we use a different time frame. For traders that are using earlier wave, you, the same thing we do, it may lose to you that, okay, this is the end of the trend, but you say, all right. This is one impulse wave on this particular time frame. And then we talk about uh, validation of the area wave count. So you are thinking that, all oh, right, one, two, three, four, five, a big correction is going to begin because you are stopped on the monthly chart. Then you look on the yearly chart, you see the bigger picture, you say, well, all right, this is in fact the end of the first wave or the end of the third wave. The pullback will be shallow and we'll have the fifth wave again. So you don't go around shouting on the Twitter or Facebook that everybody should sell the S&P 500, everybody should, or, and so on and so on, all right? Okay? So this is it. Looking at the chart from different angles, 
using okay a multiple time frame trading method to time the market so when we are looking at it from different angle what are we looking for we are looking for vital information all right now we gather we are gathering okay essential information about the financial instrument talking about technical trading all right so we gather information on the higher time frame we compare it we gather more new information anytime you go to another time frame don't look for the same information that you already have look for new information now as you you use at least three time frame you will notice that oh, all right it's making sense now all right it's making sense i should buy instead or the reason why i lost is because i did i missed one information all right so there are other traders that know how to use multiple time frames and they can make excellent decisions consistently so the risk of making wrong decision is less for somebody who understands how to use a multiple time frame trading method. So the reason why a lot of ordinary traders are losing more, I'm not saying that experienced traders are not losing, the reason why a lot of retail traders are losing more is because they don't know how to read the chart or they are behind when we're talking about okay, different time frame trading method. They are missing a lot of information. All right? They do not have all the essential information. So they look on the four-hour time frame, they look on the daily chart, they think that they should sell. Okay, they look for a diversion, they see a diversion, or they see, okay, every bearish diversion wants to sell. But if you look carefully, you may see that, okay, that bearish diversion, in fact, one should not participate in it because a third in your way is about to begin. All right? Or the price break a major resistance level now it's pulling back to retest it now you see your okay bearish divergence but the price breaks a major resistance level and now you see a bearish divergence a price pulling back only to retest that key level what you should have done is to wait for it to retest that key level and then you buy instead but all you are doing you are trying to sell it to bring it to the retest point where people are waiting to buy all right, so use different time frame to the metal, gather the information from different time frame, combine those information, use them, okay, uh, intelligently, okay, to make a better a trading decision. So by doing so, so uh, I love for new traders, uh, uh, as I said to traders, it's very easy, okay, to quickly understand the topic of a top-down trading method. But it's one, it's another thing uh, to master it. So don't be too strict with yourself. Give yourself enough time. Practice, practice. Keep polishing it, okay? Don't give up, all right? And then slowly, by gradually, by the time you know, you are getting there, all right? So this is what I'll say to you. So don't think that, Joe, this is too overwhelming for me. I don't think I would be able to do it, but start at least using two time frame, all right? So don't, if you are using only the daily chart, don't be a little bit curious, all right? A trader did ask me to record a video about the validation of the trading setup. So we talk about the setup, the signal, and the low risk entry point. But there are more to it. This is what we are talking about. So don't you, for instance, somebody may go to the daily chart, look for a trading setup and say, John, you see that setup, signal, low risk entry point. All right, I go to the daily chart, I see my trading setup, I see my signal on the hourly time frame, and I enter the trade, all right, on the 10 minute time frame. But why the trade fell? All right, now you see, so that person, though he has applied a top down trading method, but he has limited himself by stopping only on the daily chart. You see, you see what we are talking about here on the third in this uh, third part of this series of video. So he used the top down trading method, daily chart, hourly time frame, 10 minute time frame, but he didn't bother to look on the weekly chart monthly chart and a yearly chart so in this uh, third part of this level of video is very important this is what we talk about the validation of the trade setup so the setup was clearly bearish on the daily chart you implement your top down trade method from the daily chart down to the 10 minute time frame but you end up losing all right gather more information be a little bit curious how does it look on the weekly chart? How does it look on the monthly chart? How does it look on the yearly chart? Can you see the yearly chart? If not, can you see at least the quarterly chart? All right, gather all this information and then validate, okay, your daily chart trading setup. All right, so your daily chart trading setup is looking bearish, but it's not bearish. <laughs> all right, it's not bearish as such. It looks like bearish, but it's not bearish. 
or it looks bullish but it's not bullish so you think it's a high probability trading setup on the daily chart but it's not after you have checked okay the weekly chart i need to remind trader that there are a lot of uh, 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 set up ladder, especially on the weekly chart, uh, trader will uh, go, especially those who are using a moving average crossovers, all right? So sometimes they may say, a bearish crossover. And they say, all oh, right, we should sell. George said that we should sell. Use a different time frame trading method. Why we have a bearish trading setup? All right, sometimes the bearish crossover is in fact due to a resistance level. But, all right. If you check, if you gather more information on another time frame, on another higher time frame, you may see that you should discount that bearish moving average crossover. So, for traders that are using the area wave, the same thing we do. You see an area wave, a corrective wave, you see, alright, this is the end of the correction on that time frame. On that time frame, yes, it's a corrective wave. Now go to another higher time frame, gather more information, look at the price structure on a higher degree. This is what we are talking about. Okay, so subscribe to 248 your way to understand the price structure. So by using, by looking at the chart, by viewing the chart from different angles, from different time frame, this will allow us to make excellent okay, trading decisions, excellent investment decisions, and also this will allow us to time the market more accurately. We can also use the different time frame trading method to forecast the markets all right so you look at a bigger picture the daily chart the yearly chart the weekly chart you gather more information with that information you can even forecast what is likely to take place all right you are likely to all right so as the price is here and we see there was this resistance here it's a major resistance on the yearly chart remember that 53.98 we know we can focus from here that if the price start going up from here, the target will be 73.40. Do, do you think that we have done? Yeah, we can focus. That. If Microsoft breaks the body's resistance, we can tell people before it happens. There's a high chance that the next target will be 73, okay, it's 40. Because price breaks the body prior high, the next challenge is the one three eight point two percent level. So we are gathering information. We can turn the market correctly. We can make excellent decisions. We can also forecast the market more accurately. So as I explained to you, give yourself enough time. Be patient with yourself. All right. Take it one step at a time. Keep working on it. All right. Until you master it. There are two more videos that I'm going to record talking about a top-down trading method because it's an essential topic to all technical traders. And uh, in fact, uh, this topic has been a little bit neglected on YouTube. All right. So we want to talk about it once and for all. So one can watch this series of videos uh, and uh, try to master, okay, uh, what is exactly a top-down trading method, what is exactly different type of trading method, so they may become a better a technical a traders. All right. If you have any question or suggestion, all right, feel free to put in the comment section. And of course, I will be recording another video to answer your specific uh, question. All right. If you find this video truly, truly useful, let us know by giving us a thumbs up. If you dislike it, let us know by marking it down. If you think that is an essential tutorial, feel free to share with your friend on Google Plus, on Twitter, on Facebook, and also on Reddit. There are two more videos we'll be recording talking about mastering the top-down trading method, like uh, top technical traders, part four and part five. So stay tuned. Happy trading to you all, and uh, speak to you uh, soon.